My name is Mary Wilson. I just turned 30 the other day. Today, I want to share with you all about the great turnaround in my life. I have an older brother who is two years older than me. His name is John. From a young age, he has what you might call a finished look, including sharp facial features. In our neighborhood, there were rumors that he might be scouted by some agency because of his handsome face. He was what you'd call a hunk. He was charming, smart, and quick-witted even as a child. Both our parents and the adults around us adored him. On the other hand, I was the only one in the family who was chubby since kindergarten. Although my face is similar to John's, my chubby outlook is not attractive. It didn't bother me that much, though. I was shy and lacked charm. I wasn't good at talking either, so I never had the chance to be praised as smart like John. As a child, I was aware that the adults around us described us as the complete opposites. Our parents must have heard such comments too. By the time I was in elementary school, it seemed like they had lost interest in me. My grades were lower than John's when he was my age, and I stayed chubby. While John got snacks, I didn't get any. Yet, for some reason, I remained chubby. Really? You're so round and chubby like a ball. My mother would laugh as she said that. As a child, I didn't quite understand what that meant, and I just felt vaguely happy that she was laughing, but looking back, I was just being made fun of. John got new clothes and shoes for his birthday, for scoring a goal in his soccer club just about any reason. Meanwhile, even though I was a girl, I got nothing but hand-me-downs, even shoes from John. I can't remember how many times I tripped because the shoes didn't fit, the only thing that was mine alone was the backpack my grandparents gave me before they passed away. It was my treasure. Eventually, after graduating from elementary school, John went on to a private middle school. He was accepted into a well-known, academically excellent school, and our parents were thrilled. At that time, John was so cute, like a celebrity and he even received some offers to become a child model. Thanks to this, my parents, especially my mother, would often deliberately walk down busy streets with John. It was as if she was saying, hey, look how cute my son is. Meanwhile, I can't recall ever going out with my mother. Maybe when I was a baby, but I have no memory of it since I could remember. Next time, let's take Mary too. John said that once. Thinking back, he must have realized, even as a child, that I was being neglected by our parents. Sure, one day. My mother replied with an obviously reluctant face to his suggestion. I didn't feel happy about John's considerate words. Instead, I just felt a deep sense of misery as a child. A few years later, I became a middle schooler too. Unlike John, I went to a regular public middle school. From the start, it seemed like my parents had no expectations for me and had no intention of letting me take entrance exams. You know we can't spend money on you. My father had declared. I never wanted to go to a private school, but being told this from the start made me feel like my life was being shut down. When I was little, I vaguely thought, is this what it's like to be a sister? I knew nothing about other families. By the time I realized it, the abnormalities of my family had become the norm. During this time, as a teenager, I finally started to wonder, why am I the only one treated differently? But my parents' treatment of me only got harsher. My mother was a stay-at-home mom and should have had the time. Yet she frequently made me do the household chores and run errands while she went out with friends. My father, on his part, would scold me whenever I wanted to go out with friends, asking, who's going to do the chores? John always cared for me, helping out and even arguing with our parents on my behalf, but they never listened to him when it came to me. Eventually, after John went on to attend one of the top schools in the county, 
It seemed he no longer had the capacity to pay attention to home affairs, let alone to me. And that's when I really began to know what hell was like. It started with the missed parent-teacher conference incident. In any other family, a parent missing a parent-teacher conference would be a significant event. But to my parents, it was more like, we're not going, so what? So it wasn't even considered an incident. During my three years of middle school, they attended a conference only once, when I was in the first year. They didn't come for the parent-teacher conferences when I was in second grade, nor during the crucial period of third grade when I was deciding on my future educational path. My teacher was worried something was happening at home, but I just brushed it off. I knew my situation wasn't normal, but I wasn't being physically abused by my parents. I didn't know how to describe this ongoing emotional suffering. Talking about it somehow felt embarrassing. It felt like confessing, I'm a child who isn't even cherished by my own parents. And the incidents continued. Next was the left behind incident on New Year's Eve. My grades were lower than John's when he was my age, and I stayed chubby. You need to get good grades, so just stay home and study. Until then, I had always gone with them. But that year, that was their excuse. It was probably just a pretext because they found me annoying. Thanks to that, I ended up spending New Year's Eve alone. If I had suggested hanging out with friends on such a day, I felt like I would be admitting, I'm a lonely child left behind. I held onto my painful feelings, watching the annual New Year's Eve countdown show alone, and fell asleep with a few tears. It was the next morning. Ding dong, ding dong. The doorbell rang over and over, and I jumped out of bed. It was too early for my family to return, so I nervously checked who was on the intercom. There stood my maternal uncle and his wife. What's going on? Startled, I dashed to the door with my bed hair and asked, Mary, let's get you out of this house. I've talked it over with your mom, and we'll sort out the paperwork later. Don't worry. What? Uncle, what are you talking about? Seeing my uncle's demeanor, I was shaken. I couldn't understand. What did he mean by leaving the house? Mary, if you don't mind, we'd like you to become our child. We don't have any children of our own, but ever since you were born, We've always thought of you as our daughter. I was blindsided by the conversation. Indeed, my uncle and his wife, who couldn't have children due to an illness, had always cherished me whenever they visited. And I knew they had repeatedly expressed their disapproval of how my parents treated me. While John was always the center of our parents' attention, it was my aunt who played with me when I felt alone and my uncle who bought me trendy snacks and cute clothes. I have far more fond memories with this aunt and uncle than with my own parents. Your mom and dad were with me until just now. My uncle explained. They're saying, they won't let you go to college. They said once you turn 18, they plan to make you work. We can't just ignore this. You have the right to go to school and you shouldn't have to sacrifice yourself for the family. I wondered if this was what it meant to be stunned into disbelief. I couldn't believe my parents intended to rob me of my future. That's why they hadn't come to any parent-teacher conferences during those few years. My parents weren't interested in me, nor in my dreams or hopes. They had plans for me to work hard like a draft horse. I just collapsed right there and my aunt and uncle knelt down beside me. We're not your real parents, and you might feel obligated, but we will absolutely make you happy. Tears welled up in my aunt's eyes, and she hugged me as if overwhelmed by emotion. You have the right to be happy, Mary. We should have come for you sooner. If you don't mind, we'd like you to be our daughter. My uncle, with tears in his eyes, looked straight at me and said that, ah, uh, had I ever been so earnestly wanted by an adult in my life. I was just over 10 years old. 
but it was clear what I should choose. I decided to be adopted by my aunt and uncle. Ten years have passed since then. Since they took me in, my aunt and uncle have given me so much love and fun experiences. My aunt enjoyed picking out clothes for me and took me shopping on holidays, while my uncle, who had always wanted to drink wine with his daughter, prepared a bottle from the year I was born for my 21st birthday. We went on trips together, and my uncle, who was surprisingly childlike, took me to zoos and aquariums even when I was in high school. These are unforgettable memories I never had with my real parents. At first, I called them aunt and uncle, but gradually, I couldn't think of them as anyone but my parents. Now I call them mom and dad. I heard that when my biological parents returned to visit, they drunkenly told my adoptive parents. Mary is hopeless, you know, no charm, and her looks are just so-so, no presence, you know, and not smart either. Honestly, we don't need a dumb daughter. We have our excellent eldest son. My adoptive parents were furious at these words, but my biological parents, unabashed, started saying they wouldn't send me to Collage, which led to the adoption. Despite it being the middle of New Year's Eve, my sober aunt drove to get me, and I am truly grateful. I want to repay these important parents even a little, I want to be a daughter they can be proud of, so I studied hard in high school. Honestly, there was so much going on when it was time to advance to high school that I couldn't focus. That's why, after advancing to high school, I decided to secure a future that would not embarrass my adoptive parents and set goals. My efforts paid off, and I got into a prestigious national university. But that alone seemed too insignificant to express my gratitude to my adoptive parents, my dear parents. I wanted them to have an easy life in the future. With that determination, I continued to study hard in college, obtained a meteorologist license, and now I'm appearing on TV as a meteorologist. Furthermore, wanting to make my adoptive parents proud, I worked on dieting and exercising, and now I'm known as the beautiful meteorologist. After all, I always had the makings to be beautiful since I resembled John. My adoptive parents used to say, we're proud of you no matter what, but now I feel I've truly become a daughter they can boast about. There's still so much gratitude I want to give back and express, so I won't spare any effort. Just when I thought that, my biological parents suddenly appeared before me. Mary, ah, uh, you've grown up. What a fine young lady you've become. My parents approached me with tears in their eyes as I was about to get into my car after leaving the DV station. I was so taken aback by the sudden encounter that I couldn't keep up with what was happening. Honestly, it had been so long that I didn't recognize them at first. I saw you on TV and was shocked. John said, that's Mary. Can't believe you've become such a beauty. And a meteorologist too. That's incredible. My father was patting my shoulder as if to say, that's my daughter. Really, you're truly our daughter. We're so proud. They really said it. I couldn't hide the disgust on my face as I glared at them. They didn't seem bothered and kept pushing the conversation. Ah, uh, since we've met, why don't we have a meal at the restaurant up ahead? Right. You must be earning well as a meteorologist. What's the point of waiting like a stalker and then acting like it's a happy coincidence we met? Even after suggesting we have a meal at a restaurant, when they hinted about my salary being high, it just sounded like they were planning to leech off me. Well, I wouldn't let them. I needed to push them away so firmly they'd never want to meet me again. That's when an idea popped into my head. Oh, I could use this tactic. Mom, Dad, it's nice to see you, but I have another job today so I can't join you for dinner. Sorry. Of course, there's no other job. 
Well, there is a reservation I made at a fancy restaurant for my beloved aunt and uncle's anniversary. Oh, that's too bad. My mother nearly clicked her tongue, which I didn't miss. How about I get your contact information? I'm having a small party for my birthday soon, with some people from the TV station. It'll have great food and be quite fancy. I'd love to invite you both. At this suggestion, my parents' eyes lit up. Really? Well, that's kind of you. Actors and such will be there since it's a TV station. Huh? Dad, of course, they'll be there. My parents were smiling and excited. No actors were coming. It's a small party for meteorologists. Mostly newspaper and TV station staff would be there. At most, some announcers and hosts might be the most famous people attending. I smiled back at my parents without a word, reflecting their expectations. See you at the party then. With that, I left. One month later, as planned, I rented out the venue, and my birthday party took place. Although it was a small-scale event, renting a venue meant that quite a few people gathered. Mary. There came my parents, strutting around as if they owned the place. Look, we're this child's parents, they seemed to say. It was so irritating. Mom, Dad, welcome. Could you head to the green room right away? They'll do everything from your makeup to your outfit. The clothes you're wearing are nice, but there are branded clothes for rent, so take the chance to enjoy the vibe. My proposal brought wide smiles to their faces. So predictable. They were visibly thrilled. Wow, branded clothes. I hardly ever get to wear such things. I wonder if they'll look good on me. Holler. Mom's gotten a bit chubby, though. Oh, stop it, Dad. You both still look young and beautiful, so I'm sure it'll suit you. I complimented them as they exchanged those words. They nodded as if they had been waiting for those words. As a child, I was too scared of being disliked more, so I couldn't see my parents clearly nor understand their thoughts. But now, they seem quite simple to me. They are the type of people who easily wag their tails for luxury, power, or beauty things everyone likes. After having their hair and makeup done, my parents returned to the party venue in high spirits. My mother wore a light pink, off-the-shoulder miniskit dress typically worn by younger people. The result was a look that was outrageously inappropriate for her age. The sagging skin on her knees didn't quite hide her age. My father chose a flashy tie with yellow and green geometric patterns and a bright red suit. He was the only one at the venue in such flamboyant colors. Even without a dress code, it's unlikely anyone else would choose such a poor combination of attire. The clothes were indeed branded, but they were picked up from a second-hand shop. I had arranged everything myself. Please dress my parents in these. They're memorable clothes from a family party we attended when I was little. By saying that, neither the makeup nor the wardrobe staff questioned anything. Of course, I have no such memories of going to a party with these parents. But a lie can serve a purpose. My parents, believing they were wearing brand name clothes, didn't doubt it. You look great. I repeated casually. It's flashy and a bit embarrassing, but if you say it's okay, then it's fine. They seemed not to mind at all. Once, they would listen to anything the successful John said. Now, that attention is directed towards me, the successful one. As the party began, and it was my turn to speak as the honoree of the day, I have a special message for you today, so please listen carefully. Before I went up to the stage, I held their hands and said this. What? They were surprised, and they looked up happily as I took the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for gathering here today for my birthday party. I also want to thank everyone who helped plan this event. Too formal. You're not usually like that. At my words, my friends chimed in with their teasing. 
it's business as usual. I responded, playing along, and then turned towards my parents. My parents are also here today. There they are. I pointed them out as I said that, and the lighting crew cleverly spotlighted them. Those are my shameless parents who, despite abandoning me as a teenager, found out I was on TV and even ambushed me. At my words, the room buzzed with whispers. It's no surprise, as I had rarely shared my past with anyone but close friends. What, Mary? How can you say that? My mother stood up, and my father was stunned. Ever since I was about to start kindergarten, those two always compared me unfavorably to my accomplished older beat other and oppressed me. I was the only one who didn't get snacks, and I had to wear my brother's hand-me-downs. Despite this, I loved my parents as a child because parents are everything to a child. But in middle school, they continuously forced me to do household chores and eventually said they wouldn't let me go to college. They didn't even come to the parent-teacher conferences. Then, concerned about me, my aunt and uncle adopted me as their daughter. It's odd to say, but I'm usually very cheerful. That's because my aunt and uncle took me in and constantly showed me love, teaching me that I'm not a worthless child. Because of them, I gained confidence, overcame my shyness, and became more outgoing. Therefore, my usually cheerful demeanor was quite shocking to everyone at the venue. The worst. The outfit they're wearing to their daughter's birthday party is just inappropriate. Immediately, voices of condemnation towards my parents began to be heard. Unable to withstand the stares of those around them, my parents looked down, trembling. But now, I am grateful to those two. Because of them, I was fortunate to have my aunt and uncle. No, my truly important parents. And I came to know the warmth of a family. At those words, my parents gave me a look as if to say, so we're important parents too, huh? I quietly returned their gaze with a smile. Carl from Daily Info, are you here? Please, turn all of this content and the photos into an article. Consider it a birthday gift to me. As I called out to an acquaintance from the magazine from the stage, they had already captured photos of my parents. Stop, stop it, don't take pictures. My parents panicked, desperately trying to hide their faces. Such poo is sports. I yelled at them. When I was little, no matter how much I hated something and said stop, you forced me to continue. It's incredibly hypocritical to allow yourselves to do that but say it's not okay when it's done to you. My mother was tearful at my rebuke. I'm sorry. Please don't make it an article. Your mom and dad will be blamed too. You wouldn't want your parents to go through that, right? I was astounded by her plea. Do you really think I still consider you my parents? You neglected your duties as parents and abandoned everything. My parents are my aunt and uncle. Only those two are my mom and dad. Stay out of my life forever. Before I knew it, I was overwhelmed by memories and gratitude towards my aunt and uncle, and tears were naturally streaming down my face. Seeing this, the attendees forcibly removed my parents from the venue. It's over, truly over this time. I have completely severed my ties with those people. As a child, I cut ties under the protection of my aunt and uncle. But this time, I was truly able to distance myself from those people using my own strength. Despite the sense of accomplishment and gratitude towards my aunt and uncle, and pride in how much I've grown, tears welled up. But I felt incredibly refreshed. Are you sure about this? Later, the magazine asked, but I asked them to go ahead and publish my story. It turned out to be quite sensational, covered by various programs, and there were concerns about my image being damaged. But in reality, the articles and news were mostly favorable to me, describing me as the girl who turned her life around.
approaching the modern Cinderella, and my reputation only increased. Meanwhile, those two supposed parents moved houses because they were looked down upon by neighbors after my article was published. The rumor spread quickly at my father's workplace, and he was pushed into retirement. My mother had always been a housewife. As they are now both unemployed, they barely managed to live off their savings, or so I heard from John. Yes, even after being adopted, John was the only one who cared about me, visiting the home I shared with my aunt and uncle. Initially, he said he wanted to live together again, but soon he realized, it's better for you to be in this home, Mary, and was happy that I had made the right choice to be adopted. He even helped me with my studies during my college years. He's truly my dear brother. After I told everything to the magazine, he too, decided to have nothing more to do with our biological home, effectively estranging himself. The next time I meet our parents might be at their funeral. He joked, but knowing him, he probably wouldn't even attend that. Five years have passed since then. I married Carl, the magazine editor who helped me publish that article. We've had children, and now I'm the mother of twin boys and a girl. As their mother, I want to ensure my children grow up without any bias, laughing freely and living joyfully, just as my aunt and uncle showered me with unconditional love. And like John, who has always watched over me from afar, I strive to raise my children to be kind and treat everyone equally. Besides parenting, I still have other responsibilities, namely repaying my aunt and uncle for their kindness. This year, again, for their wedding anniversary, I gifted them a trip, and together with my husband and children, we all went to Alaska. Mary, you have your own family now. You don't need to keep doing this. My aunt and uncle would say that, but repaying them is also a pleasure for me. It's not an obligation, I do it because I enjoy seeing their happy faces. It's like a passion for me. Don't take away my fun. I already planned the next thing to do as I joked around. Maybe next time we'll all stay at a fancy hotel. There's still so much more I want to do with my family.